Well, we've got plenty to get through, but let's start with his goal, the eventual winner. It's great anticipation from him, isn't it, to follow in the shot here from Bulldog? It is. I mean, as he said, he started the play, brilliant little pocket space, chops in, and then this is a fantastic diagonal ball. And like I said earlier, what he does, he doesn't admire it. He gets himself into the area, goes in past, you know, Aston Villa players who are not watching him, runs off the back of the shoulder, and it's a brilliant bit of finish. And you see again in this run, He's clever with his movement because he could be offside, but he just that's that little two-step there which slows him down and then gives him the opportunity to stay onside. And look, it's a clever finish, gets a little bit of luck with the bounce and he takes it over, you know, an informed Martinez, really. And you, you earn your luck by being at the right place at the right time. And, and, you know, it's nice to see the fighting for the manager and for the club. And I like that interview from him, which is exactly what Sheffield United want and what they're all about. Mm. And you like the finish? I did like the finish. It's not easy, Darrell. It's coming across him. He's anticipated it, like he said. He wants to score more goals in the box. And he's actually timed it, but he's just slightly behind him. So when he's coming there and he just gets a full foot contact and just into the ground, gets a little bit of luck, it doesn't bounce over. But it's a good finish from McGoldrick. Right, Joe, to the big talking point of the yes. second half then. The red card to Phil Jagielka. The referee went to have a look. VAR yeah. advised him to go and have a look in the monitor. Robert Jones' denial of a clear goal-scoring opportunity. We'll come to it, but talk to yeah, me but about the way the play unfolds here. When they, listen, and Sheffield United in full flow with the overlapping right backs last year. Egan, Basham, and O'Connell was working. Here, Ampadu makes a slight tactical mistake. They've got good numbers up. Like They've got Bulldog overlapping. Fleck there. Norwood comes in with a cross. And Ampadu, he doesn't need to be in that position. So he's, he, he, they're throwing bodies forward and fair play to them. But if you look at him now, he's there. The two against one is okay. But he's jogging, he's jogging, he's jogging. He doesn't get back into play. So you're thinking, well, how's that happened? Villa recognise that. Jagielka's out of place. And another young centre-half on the other side of him, Brian, he should also be alert to the danger, should be covering across. That's a beauty of when you've got three, there shouldn't be that much distance. So that gives the referee an opportunity to send him off. If, if, Brian, if he's alert, Brian, and he's five yards ahead, he, he, it's not... So, but what I think we've seen a great play from Sheffield United of last season where they were overlapping centre it blew us all away. But when, it's not, when you're not confident, it could be difficult. Now, all if that look, being said, though, did he deserve to go off? <laughs> it's harsh. It's harsh. You sort of master of it. The, the, the back three were masters of their own downfall because their positional sense wasn't good. So it gave the referee. The referee would have been looking at that screen thinking to himself, do I, don't I? It was one of them calls on, on a knife edge. And then you get into the debate whether it's clear and obvious and things like that, you know, which is which is all very vague. But I think from a technical and tactical point of view, Ampadu was out of position on the attacking phase. And Brian was out of position on the defensive phase and they ultimately cost them. But after that, I will say, the pair of them, Karen, were Brilliant. absolutely outstanding when they went and played Ampadu and, and, and Brian and outstanding for the rest of the game. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's bring Peter Walton in first, though. Peter, between the referee and VAR, have they got that right? Well, when Rob Jones initially gives that free kick, he takes a snapshot picture because he knows that the denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity to take into consideration. And what he considers from that snapshot picture is that there's a recovering defender, which is one of the factors he needs to factor in. So he's awarded a yellow card. When we replay it and he's given the opportunity under VAR situations to go to that monitor, the angles and the pictures he sees, he noticed that Bryant, the covering defender, has got far too much ground to make up and therefore would not have intercepted the, uh, the forward. And although it looks harsh on the, on the first shot, when you analyse it, it is the correct decision. But you always tell me, Peter, about it having to be clear and obvious in terms of the error. Was it a clear and obvious error by the referee? Well... It was a clear and obvious error under VAR situations because the VAR is allowing him the um, angles he doesn't see as a referee. And as a referee, you're looking down the barrel, you see the foul, you take a snapshot picture and you give an instantaneous situation a yellow or red card. When he's got the opportunity then to go and have a look for himself and realise that that snapshot picture of the defenders is not quite as he saw it, and in fact Bryant was some 20 yards away, he knows then that there's no chance of Bryant making that ground up. And in fact, it does become an obvious goal scoring opportunity. OK, Peter, thank you very much indeed. Do you agree with that? Clear and obvious? I did, still didn't think cost it's... Sheffield United in the end. Thankfully, 
Uh, I think what Joe's point about all the tactical stuff, there's a lot of errors into that situation. You never, ever leave Jagielka in that situation. You know, Brian's got to get across earlier. Ethan Ampadu can't get forward. Don't leave him exposed. If it didn't leave him exposed, that would never have happened. Thankfully, the red card didn't result in anything for Sheffield United further than that. Yeah, because they were resolute after going down uh, to 10. So brilliant defending, a good save in here as well. Brilliant defending. And, uh, and Chris Wilde will be bursting with pride at the way because it almost simplified the game for from Karen, didn't it? They went to a 4-4-1 and it just, they were resolute. And if you look at this clip here in particular, this is the, the shape that was in, but they, they wasn't passive. At times, Fleck left his place, followed up by McBurney or Burke, and then they, they made Villa, so they, they, they all got up together at the right time. The distances between the midfield and the defence was excellent. And I think Chris Wilder might have stumbled on something here. Yeah, I, I think they look really comfortable in this shape. Look how compact they are, narrow they are, protecting the goal. And when you play in this formation, everyone knows whose responsibility is for each player. When you play with a back three at times, it's quite difficult. And you saw that with the, with the red card. Who goes where, who goes forward in a 4-4-1 or a 4-4-2 if you get the extra player on. It's easy to know your roles and responsibility, mm -hmm. and I think he might look at it moving forward because of personnel and because they did well. And look at all the blocks. Now, this is the desire and the hunger to write, we're going to keep a clean sheet. And they haven't had a clean sheet since January. And the desire to do it and to protect. And the goalkeeper, when you need him, he's there to step up. I thought they were excellent. And, and the confidence and the leadership, Joe, it just yeah. grew, didn't they? Yeah, them two, them two young boys in the middle of the centre of the park were criticised for the guy, and they was in the wrong positions. After that, they was top, top class. And, and I think what Chris Wilder might be thinking to himself now is, you know, when, when you're a little bit low on confidence, when the team's not flowing like it was, sometimes you have to simplify it. And they did that. They had to. It was forced on them. And they was, they was brilliant. And it was, the Sheffield United fans should be very, very proud of the performance tonight. Should we find out what he's thinking? Yes. <laughs> Good, because right now he's with Natalie. <laughs> Chris, congratulations, a goal. Big week, uh, starting from uh, the last game at home. We had three home games on the bounce, and we wanted to, to get some points on the board, and we knew it was going to be a tough game today. Um, and obviously, it got tough when we went down to 10 men, but it showed uh, how much we're fighting for this club. Uh, you know, 10 men against a good team, backs against the wall for the last 20 minutes, and it was just pleasing to get the win. As you say, to, to lose Phil Jagielka and to absorb that pressure at the end as well, what does that say about the, the character of this side? Massive character, you know. We all care about the club. We all want uh, wins, you know. We, we all don't want to be in this position. We know the table and we know where we lie, but you know, we're all still fighting for our lives, for our future, uh, for this club. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a saying, it's not over to the fat lady sings, and, you know, we're still fighting um, to the end. I imagine it's uh, a lot more satisfying when you start a move and you can finish it off as well. Just talk us through your goal. Yeah, it's nice to get a goal. Um, obviously, um, I started it with a, a pass across, and then George, I, I knew that he was going to cut in another shot, and I just followed it in. Um, you know, that's where I want to score more goals in the box, and you know, it's great that um, I got on the end of it. What did that a win like that against against an Aston Villa side that have been going well do for for morale in this? Massive, uh, you know, every win that we get, you know, I think since the turn of the year, since the FA Cup tie against Bristol Rovers. Um, and we won that game and we got that first win of the season. You know, I think our form's been all right. Um, won some, uh, lost some, drew a few. Um, but we just got to keep going. Uh, we got Southampton here at the weekend and then we just got to go again and show that grit and determination and, and fight for the points. Well done tonight. Appreciate it.